Hello and welcome to another video. This is still squeeze theorem you're going to use for a limit problem. Now uh, there's another way you could solve this actually but if the question specifically says you have to use the squeeze theorem then you don't have an option. So uh, what really does the squeeze theorem say? It says, um, let me just write it on this side. Okay so if you have uh, say f of g is less than or equal to, uh, not f of g, f of x is less than or equal to g of x and is less than or equal to let's say h of x. Okay and at some point f of x is equal to h of x then g of x must be equal to both of them. Okay so let's say this becomes 5 and this is 5 then this has to be 5 because it's squeezed between the two values and there cannot be a gap between a number and itself. Okay, so you can't have something between 4 and 4. It must be 4 because of this expression. So that's the whole idea of the squeeze theorem. But this doesn't look like an inequality, it's just an expression. So the first way to start using squeeze theorem for anything is to establish an inequality. You have to look for something that is more like a lower boundary and something that's an upper boundary and you know your function or your expression is in the middle of it. So let's look at this question. Um, this is a polynomial. There is no limit to how far x squared can go. Whatever x you plug in, the value just keeps increasing. The same thing here, x squared minus 7 is an increasing function. Okay, we know it's a parabola but both sides as you go to infinity is continuously increasing. Okay, this is the only thing you might need to consider because if you take the cos cosine of a value um, of a function of anything rather, you're going to get a maximum of positive 1 or minimum of negative 1. And so every time you see a trig function in a limit and you're asked to use squeeze theorem, that's the first thought that comes to your head. You want to set the argument of the trig function between its boundaries. Okay, um, for tangent it wouldn't work because tangent goes to positive infinity and negative infinity. Okay, uh, but for cosine and sine, you know they're restricted between positive one, I mean between negative one and positive one. So we can start from there and then build from there. Okay, so let's see. We know that negative one is always less than or equal to the cosine of any angle. Okay, it doesn't matter what the argument is negative 1 will be less than whatever you have here. So I'm just going to go straight into the calculation. And this is less than or equal to positive 1. So we've got this expression and that's what is going to help us with this. Remember, we want to finally build this, but what we have now is this. Okay? So we're going to expand this expression to now look like this. Okay? So the first thing you want to look at is, boy, um, the cosine of... 5x, okay, but this is negative cosine, so I have to rewrite this. So I have to change this cosine to negative cosine, so this becomes, um, let's see, I multiply this by negative 1, this becomes negative cosine 5x, okay, it's less than, because I multiply this by negative, oh, I've got to change the sign, oh, this becomes greater than or equal to, multiply by negative 1, it becomes negative 1, multiply by negative 1 it becomes positive 1 and this sign also changes. So remember when you multiply or divide by a negative um, um, constant you will, or a negative value you have to have this case, you, you flip the signs. That's from inequalities, basic algebra. Okay, now, but it means you can rewrite this, you can actually flip this all the way since this is the smaller and this is the greatest we can actually rewrite it and it gives us again negative 1 is less than or equal to negative cosine 5x and is less than or equal to 1. So we're back to where we started but we just flipped this. I did not just want to put the minus because you have to go through this step because sometimes this doesn't always work out like that. So now that we have this we still want it to look like the top. So what did we do to the top? Well it looks like we added 4x squared. So I can add 4x squared to this, add 4x squared to this, add 4x squared to this. Okay, so we're going to have, um, maybe I can start the work on this side. So if I add 
4x squared to this. So we're still on top right now. We're still dealing with the top part. I'm going to add 4x squared to this. Um, 4x squared, 4x squared. So we're going to have, um, this is going to be this expression. See, I haven't introduced the limit. Okay, we're going to go back to the limit later, but let's just keep going. If I add 4x squared to this side, we have 4x squared minus 1. Okay, will be less than or equal to 4x squared minus cosine 5x. Okay, and it will be less than or equal to 4x squared plus 1. So this is what we've got here, and it's beginning to look like what we have. But something is still missing x squared minus 4. Now I have to divide everything by x squared minus 4. This is where you have to be careful because I am dividing. Remember when you multiply or divide by a negative value you flip the signs. But we know this will not be negative, okay? And whatever happens, even if it's negative, the signs will flip and we'll still have the same answer. So don't really bother yourself with x squared because x squared is going to infinity and we know as x goes to infinity it becomes in very large compared to 7 so 7 might become insignificant so that's the reason I'm going to be flipping I'm not going to be flipping the sign because I'm going to assume that x squared minus 7 will be positive okay because as x gets larger and larger you're going to have that okay okay so let's you're going to have a positive value so we're going to divide everything by x squared minus 7 so we have 4x squared minus 1 divided by x squared minus 7 is less than or equal to 4x squared minus the cosine of 5x divided by 4x, sorry, divided by x squared minus 7. So now that we've got that, all we have to do is Compare what we have now with what we, the problem. Well, this is the problem we've got. We've got a problem that looks exactly <laughs> in the middle as the question. So this is a good time to take the limits. So we know if we get an answer here and the answer we get here is exactly the answer here, then we know that's the answer for the middle part. So we're going to say the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4x squared minus 1 over x squared minus 7 is less than or equal to this limit as x squared minus 7 uh, sorry as x goes to negative infinity as x approaches negative infinity of 4x squared minus cosine of 5x over x squared minus 7 will be less than or equal to the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 7. Okay, so now you already know how to take limit. Just looking at this, even from your pre-calculus, you know that the limit of this expression is 4. Remember, it is the horizontal asymptote, asymptote of the rational expression. That's what you call the limit as x goes to positive infinity or negative infinity. It's obvious here. If you think it's, you're not sure what it is, what you want to do is look at the denominator and divide every term by the highest power of x. Okay, so that's the, 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 the trick to this. Or you just say as everything becomes larger and larger, this is going to become irrelevant. This becomes irrelevant, okay? So, and then what you have left will be 4x squared over x squared, which can cancel each other out, and you have just 4 there. However you want to solve it, okay, this is easy, okay? I'm just going to write this limit to be 4, which from your pre-calculus class, you just have to remember how to find the horizontal asymptote. That's the same thing as the limit as x goes to infinity for a rational expression. Okay, here, I'm going to leave this expression here, the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4x squared minus cosine of 5x over x squared minus 7 is less than or equal to. The same story is told here. It's the same expression. Well, just different, but it doesn't matter. At this point, you still get 4 as your limit. So this is sandwiched, squeezed by two 4s. Okay? And that makes it 4 because it's impossible for it to be anything other than 4. There is nothing greater than 4 and less than 4. 
okay? But there is something equal to 4 and equal to 4. It has to be 4. So that's it. So you say that therefore, you say the limit as x goes to negative infinity of 4x squared minus cosine of 5x divided by x squared minus 7 is equal to 4 by the squeeze theorem. I hope this video helps you on how to build from here to get to what you need. If it did, give this video a like, share it, leave a comment in the comment section, and be subscribed if you're not subscribed. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Don't stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.